Japanese scientists watched America's rockets pierce the sky in 1949. What they said next changed everything. America's early rocket programs reached incredible heights. Japanese scientists studied every launch with intense focus. They discovered something extraordinary about the technology. Their findings revealed gaps in American designs, but they also saw opportunities others missed. What these experts understood about reaching space changed their entire approach. Their reactions weren't just about admiration or competition. They realized the true power behind these missions, and what they said would echo through decades of technological development. They realized something America didn't want anyone to know. In 1949, American rockets started reaching higher than ever before. These machines were pushing toward the edge of space. Japanese scientists were watching every single launch. They had their notebooks ready. They took notes on everything they saw. But they weren't just admiring the rockets. They were studying the failures, too. Every time a rocket went up, they learned something new. The Americans were testing new designs. They were trying different fuels. They were pushing the limits of what was possible. The Japanese team noticed patterns. They saw things the Americans might have missed, small details that others overlooked. These weren't just any scientists. Many of them had worked on advanced projects during the war years. They understood rocket science deeply, and what they realized would change everything. Because hidden in those American launches was something unexpected, something that would give Japan a chance to catch up faster than anyone thought possible. The Japanese scientists discovered gaps in the American designs. These weren't just small mistakes. They were fundamental problems that slowed progress down. The Americans were focused on power. They wanted bigger rockets. They wanted more thrust. But they were missing something important. The Japanese team saw it clearly. The fuel systems had weaknesses. The guidance systems were too heavy. The materials being used weren't efficient enough. Every launch showed these problems, but the Americans kept pushing forward with the same approach. They believed more power would solve everything. Japanese engineers thought differently. They had learned hard lessons about efficiency. Resources were limited back home. They couldn't afford to waste anything. So they looked for smarter solutions instead of just bigger ones. This gave them an advantage. While America focused on brute force, Japan could focus on precision. They could build lighter systems. They could use less fuel. They could make rockets that were smarter, not just stronger. But there was more to discover. Something even more valuable was hiding in plain sight. Their reaction revealed a secret about the technology itself. The scientists gathered in a small room in Tokyo. They reviewed months of data together, launch reports, technical papers, photographs from American test sites. Everything was spread across the table. They talked for hours about what they'd seen. Then one engineer noticed something unusual. The American rockets all used similar technology, but that technology came from somewhere else originally. It came from captured designs. German rocket scientists had moved to America after the war ended. They brought their knowledge with them. The V-2 rocket technology formed the foundation. This was the secret nobody talked about openly. America's edge in rocket science wasn't purely American innovation. It was built on borrowed knowledge. The Japanese scientists understood this immediately. If America could use German designs, why couldn't others learn from American tests? The technology wasn't locked away forever. It was being displayed in the sky with every launch. Knowledge could travel, ideas could spread, and Japan had something valuable too, their own engineering traditions and clever minds ready to learn. The Japanese reaction wasn't anger or resentment. It was determination. They saw opportunity where others might have seen defeat. America had resources. Germany had experience. But Japan had something different. They had scientists who understood how to do more with less. The team started making plans immediately. They couldn't build the same rockets America was building. They didn't have the budget. They didn't have the facilities. 
They didn't have the massive industrial support, but they didn't need to copy America's approach. They could create their own path forward. Japanese engineers were experts at miniaturization. They knew how to make things smaller and better. This skill would become their greatest strength. Instead of massive rockets, they could build precise ones. Instead of raw power, they could focus on efficiency and control. The scientists wrote detailed reports. They shared their findings with universities. They proposed new research programs. The government listened carefully. Japan's future in space was beginning to take shape. But one discovery remained. The biggest revelation was still coming. And what they discovered would shape the future forever. The Japanese scientists made their final breakthrough in understanding. They realized something profound about reaching space. It wasn't just about having the biggest rocket. It wasn't about who got there first, either. The real challenge was sustainability. It was about building programs that could last for decades. America was winning the early race, but winning early didn't guarantee winning forever. The Japanese team saw this clearly. They watched American budgets grow massive. They saw complex programs that required enormous teams. Everything was big. Everything was expensive. Everything required constant funding. This approach had limits. Japan couldn't compete that way, but they didn't need to. They could build smaller satellites. They could develop specialized technology. They could focus on specific goals instead of trying to do everything at once. This strategy was smarter for a nation rebuilding its economy. The scientists presented their vision. Space exploration didn't require matching America's spending. It required smart thinking. It required patience. It required focusing on what Japan did best. The implications were enormous for Japan's future. What started as watching American rockets became a complete strategy. The scientists weren't just observers anymore. They were planners. They were builders. They were creating Japan's path to space. Their reports influenced national policy. Universities started new programs. Young engineers got excited about possibilities. The dream of reaching space felt achievable now, not through copying America, but through innovation. Japanese scientists said something important about those American rockets. They said the technology was impressive. They said the achievements were remarkable. But they also said something else something that revealed their true thinking. They said Japan could do it differently, maybe even better in some ways. Not bigger, not more powerful, but smarter, more efficient, more sustainable. They believed this completely, and history would prove them right. Within decades, Japan would launch satellites. They would contribute to space exploration, they would become leaders in certain technologies, all because scientists in 1949 looked up at American rockets and saw possibility instead of impossibility. The lessons from those early observations stayed with Japan forever. When American rockets reached the edge of space, Japanese scientists didn't just admire them. They studied them. They learned from them. They found their own way forward. This approach became part of Japanese engineering culture. Efficiency over size. Precision over power. Innovation over imitation. These principles guided everything that followed. Japanese space programs reflected this thinking. Their satellites were smaller but highly capable. Their technology was refined. Their approach was methodical. The scientists who watched those 1949 launches passed their knowledge to the next generation. Those students became the engineers of the 1960s and 1970s. They built Japan's first satellites. They developed new technologies. They proved their teachers were right. America had shown what was possible. Germany had provided the foundation. 
but Japan carved its own unique path. They didn't need to be first. They didn't need to be biggest. They needed to be smart. They needed to be persistent. They needed to believe in their own capabilities. And that belief changed everything. What Japanese scientists said about American rockets wasn't just commentary. It was a declaration of intent. They acknowledged American achievements, but they also declared their own ambitions. They saw the edge of space as reachable for everyone, not just superpowers. Their words carried weight. They inspired a generation. They shaped policies. They changed how Japan viewed its place in the world. Space wasn't just for others to explore. Japan belonged there, too. The scientists understood something fundamental. Technology doesn't stay secret forever. Knowledge spreads. What one nation discovers, others can learn. The question isn't whether you can learn. The question is what you do with that knowledge. Japan chose innovation. They chose efficiency. They chose a sustainable approach. When they looked at American rockets piercing the sky, they didn't see barriers. They saw blueprints. They saw lessons. They saw opportunities. That perspective made all the difference. Because sometimes the most important discovery isn't about technology. It's about possibility. It's about believing you can reach the edge of space too, just by taking a different path. Japanese scientists transformed observations of America's rockets into groundbreaking space program history. Hideo Itokawa's research led to solid-fueled Lambda rockets and the Osumi satellite launch. International cooperation replaced competition. The Hayabusa asteroid probe showcased aerospace technology innovations nobody expected. Japan's views on exploration emphasized precision over power. Today, collaboration between nations advances rocket technology worldwide. From watching American machines pierce the sky to leading missions, Japan proved different paths reached the same stars.